The human body is an incredible biologic machine. More so than probably any other animal on Earth, we've evolved to interact with energy on an incredibly subtle scale, and we have many unusual evolutionary adaptations that speak to this truth. For example, by losing our body hair, we're less insulated from the nearby environment, and our ability to sweat helps us to regulate our electrolyte balances better than nearly any other mammal. And our brain is so important that we devote about 20% of our caloric intake to something that comprises only 2% of our body mass. Clearly, at the center of our physiology is the human bioelectrical system, consisting of the heart, brain, spine, nervous system, endocannabinoid system, and other layers. The bioelectrical system is how we connect to and use subtle energies for our evolutionary advantage and for the development of our consciousness. On the low end of the spectrum, people with nervous system disorders have highly dysfunctional bioelectrical systems. Then in the middle are average people whose bioelectrical systems function normally. And on the high end of the spectrum, you have individuals with highly developed bioelectrical systems who are sensitive to subtle energy changes in their environment, others, and themselves. Hi, I'm your host, Stefan, and in this video, we're gonna discuss why some people can better feel and interact with subtle energies compared to others, and I'm gonna give you five signs that you're bioelectrically sensitive to electromagnetic energies. Currently, there is limited mainstream awareness about the human bioelectrical system and how it shapes our biology and our consciousness. Because of this, many people who are bioelectrically sensitive, either naturally and or because they've developed the skill, may not even know that they have this gift, but they do usually have some unconscious intuition that they can feel energy better than others. The first thing that determines the development of your bioelectrical system is your genetics and the current expression of your DNA. Some people are born with a more advanced and optimized bioelectrical system, whereas others are born with the more standard human blueprint. From that point on, the activities that you do while growing up have a massive influence on the development of your bioelectrical system. Those people who naturally use their bioelectrical systems, like with dance, gymnastics, and sports, by training their brain, or by strengthening their heart and cardiovascular system, over the course of many years, shift to their bodies to be more bioelectrically adept and sensitive. Non-sensitive individuals are more average. They typically didn't stimulate their bioelectrical systems in any significant way while growing up, and they still do little to harness their unique human bioelectrical potential. Non-sensitive individuals have had very few, if any, extrasensory perception or psychic type occurrences in their lives, and it's for this reason that they find these abilities hard to believe. This is in contrast to people who are sensitive to subtle energies, who've usually had at least a few moments where they felt like they tapped into dimensions of reality beyond normal be it something like lucid dreaming, precognition, an out-of-body experience, or simply a heightened ability to feel other people's energy. Bioelectrically non-sensitive individuals are less creative and see the world more for how it is and less for how it could be. Being more conscious, people sensitive to subtle energies are more curious and better see the unlimited possibilities that exist in life. Doors open for them where others would normally hit a wall. So there you have some clues that indicate whether or not you're sensitive to subtle energies. And now we'll get into the five main signs that I've discovered that indicate whether or not you're a bioelectrically sensitive individual. The first sign that you're bioelectrically sensitive is that you're sensitive to your environment, changes in weather, and to the people around you. The human brain is one of the most complex structures known in the universe, and its proper functioning relies on the propagation of very subtle picotesla strength brainwaves. It's been shown that there's a huge variability in brainwave patterns between individuals. Some people only display weak, non-coherent brainwaves, whereas those who have achieved higher states of consciousness like meditators, monks, and mystics display higher power, higher frequency, and more widespread synchronous brainwave activity. Only by reducing the biological noise of the brain are electric signals made by certain groups of neurons able to be detected and amplified by neurons in other parts of the brain. Widespread brainwave synchronicity at frequencies like 8 Hz are the timing signal that allows for higher frequency beta and gamma brainwave activity to commence across the entire brain. More widespread, higher frequency, and higher power synchronous brainwave activity is a hallmark indicator of higher consciousness. This type of brain activity requires a more sensitive brain, and depending on their scale, electromagnetic disturbances can be overwhelming for a sensitive individual. 
A non-sensitive individual with higher noise levels in the brain often doesn't notice these electromagnetic disturbances because they simply just blend in. Your environment, the weather, and other people expose you to new electromagnetic conditions. If you find yourself getting a headache, feeling fatigued, or simply just feeling off when in an environment polluted with electrosmog and or from weather changes like a thunderstorm, then that's a sign that your bioelectrical system is highly developed. Since it's operating at a higher functionality with less noise, the more sensitive bioelectrical system requires better stabilizing and grounding. And if those factors and practices like grounding and yoga aren't in place, then your body will quickly give you feedback. A really common example of people who are bioelectrically sensitive getting headaches is when the Earth's natural energy fields, the Schumann resonances, increase in power. Changes in the atmosphere, ionosphere, and magnetosphere generate Schumann waves. And since Schumann waves overlap in frequency and power with human brain waves, when Schumann resonances dramatically increase in power, say from a solar coronal mass ejection impacting the Earth, it can overload the delicate bioelectrical circuitry of the brain, causing a headache or a migraine. Another example would be people who feel fatigue or simply off when exposed to high levels of electrosmog from Wi-Fi and cellular signals or from simply using technology too much. The brain operates in the 0 to 40 plus hertz range, which is at a much, much lower frequency than modern radio technology like 5G, which uses electromagnetic waves that pulse billions of times per second. Highly magnetic magnetosomes in the brain align to magnetic fields and will vibrate at the same frequency as the electromagnetic fields that you're surrounded by. The more powerful the field, the stronger the magnetosome resonance to it, and the greater the resulting inflammation in the brain will be. The human body did not evolve under conditions of such high frequency electromagnetism, and this causes biologic problems unique to the modern era. Lastly, if you find that you're highly intuitive in sensing the energy and emotions of other people, then that's a sign that you're bioelectrically sensitive. The electromagnetic biofield that the heart generates with every beat is encoded with emotional information. For example, the signal average power and frequencies of someone's biofield who is in a happy, calm state is coherent and harmonious and has clear frequency peaks whereas the biofield of someone who is anxious and frustrated is volatile and has no clear energy pattern. If you're inside someone's 2 meter biofield and can feel that something is off intuitively, that's a sign that you have a highly sensitive bioelectrical system and that you're picking up on the non-coherent, unstable biofield of the other individual or individuals. If you're really sensitive to this, then you've likely experienced how sometimes the mismatch between you and another person is so strong that you have to immediately leave their vicinity before your biofields clash any further. The second sign that you're bioelectrically sensitive is if you have long hair. We've all seen the gag of someone rubbing a balloon on their head, causing their hair to collect static electricity and levitate. And the longer your hair is, the more it subtly interacts with the electrical properties of your environment. Further evidence that long hair increases bioelectrical sensitivity comes from some interesting research that was conducted with Native Americans during the Vietnam War. Now, I can't find the actual study for this, so take this for what it's worth. But what they found is the Native Americans who kept their hair long displayed better intuition, feeling of the environment, and precognition than their counterparts who had their hair cut. Exactly how longer hair helped these Native American scouts better perform their duties and protect themselves from danger isn't known. Having grown my hair out myself and noticing how it's increased my personal bioelectrical sensitivity, I'm inclined to believe that long hair has this nervous system extending an ESP antenna-like effect. The third sign that you're sensitive to bioelectrical energies is if you have good posture and or you're highly flexible. Each of these skills, whether a natural gift or developed through hard work, are linked to increased bioelectrical development because they help the movement and flow of energy through the body. We'll start with posture. The spine is a huge bioelectrical conduit that connects the entire body to the brain. And if the nerves and bioelectrical pathways that travel through the spinal cord are out of alignment, then the flow of energy is made less efficient. Excessive spinal curvature in any direction limits the efficient flow of bioelectrical energy, and a J-spine is better than an S-spine for the functioning of the bioelectrical system. Here's a suggestion. Next time you're out, take a look around and notice the posture of the people around you. 
Most people are hunched over looking at their cell phone with their spine and body in terrible alignment. If you were to ask them to sit in lotus posture vertical and upright for longer than five minutes, most will begin noticing fatigue and pain sweep across their back and shoulders. And that's if they can even get into lotus posture to begin with. In fact, this is the best way you can test if you have good posture. If you can sit and meditate in lotus for 30 minutes uninterrupted without any discomfort and or pain, then you have good spinal alignment and bioelectrical currents flow easily through your body from head to toe and back. If you want to improve your posture, focus on remodeling your S-spine into a J-spine. From personal experience, I can tell you that remodeling your spine is not a short or easy process, but it's a journey that's highly worthwhile to go through, not only for the fitness, wellness, and postural benefits, but also for the consciousness benefits that result. If you're flexible and bendy, that's another sign that you're bioelectrically sensitive. For the body to move into different positions and shapes, many of them very open and exposed, it wants to first make sure it's not putting itself at risk of nerve damage. Being flexible is a sign that the nerves, muscles, fascia, and other connective tissues of the body are in good alignment, strong, and capable of being manipulated in various ways to no detriment. As you stretch more often, the body becomes used to the new flexible postures you're placing yourself in and directs more resources towards improving the functionality of the nervous system than it would have otherwise. This relationship between posture, flexibility, and bioelectricity is made apparent by Parkinson's disease. People who suffer from Parkinson's disease have a twisted, hunched over posture, and they'll progressively lose their fine motor control as the disease develops. Give them some cannabis, which activates and normalizes bioelectrical activity via the endocannabinoid system, and their fine motor control and posture improve, sometimes dramatically. If you have good flexibility, you also likely have good posture, and both of these traits are key signs of a more highly developed and sensitive bioelectrical system. The fourth sign that you're bioelectrically sensitive is that you have good gut health. The microbiome of the gut is connected to the bioelectrical system via the gut-brain axis. In Parkinson's disease, where we see a complete breakdown of the bioelectrical system, it's a hallmark trait to also have poor gut health and a microbiome gut dysbiosis. With an unhealthy microbiome not producing the neurotransmitters and short-chain fatty acids the brain and body needs, the stage is set for a complete breakdown of the autonomic and central nervous systems. If you have a healthy and diverse microbiome and you don't have any gut health problems like leaky gut, irritable bowel syndrome, and Crohn's disease, then your gut-brain axis is functioning efficiently and contributing to the optimal development of your consciousness. It's theorized that one of the main reasons the human brain expanded so much in size and cognitive power over the past couple million years is because of beneficial interactions between the microbiome and brain through the gut-brain axis. The more symbiotic and diverse the microbiome is, the more beneficial brain compounds it produces, like neurotransmitters, short-chain fatty acids, and secondary plant metabolites, which support the optimal growth and development of the brain. The human brain and bioelectrical system are plastic and can be remodeled and reconfigured over time under the right conditions, and one of the best things you can do to improve your bioelectrical system is to improve your gut health. If you want some comprehensive help in improving your gut health and microbiome, then I suggest you purchase my Holistic Gut Health Guide. The fifth sign that you're bioelectrically sensitive is if you're strong. Lean body mass and muscle is important for being strong, but even more important is the functioning of the central nervous system. Powerlifting and Olympic weightlifting, for example, place the body under extreme stress and the efficient routing of high power signals from the brain to the musculature ensures a greater chance of success in lifting the weights and avoiding injury. There are entire training programs in both sports devoted specifically towards improving the efficiency of the central nervous system. As speed, power capabilities, and routing efficiency of the central nervous system improves, then heavier and heavier weights can be lifted and the body is comfortable unlocking more of your natural strength potential without additional risk of injury. I was a powerlifter in my early 20s, achieving a three times bodyweight deadlift and a two times plus bodyweight squat. And I can say from personal experience that getting stronger increased my bioelectrical capabilities. In more ways than one, it was my many years of powerlifting that set the stage for my growing interest in the human bioelectrical system. And if you're strong naturally or because you've developed a skill, 
then you likely have a more developed biological system than most people. As you can see, there are many different things that indicate that you might have a highly developed biological system. Some of these factors can actively be improved by you if you so wish, no matter your age, though the younger you start, the better. What are your thoughts? Are you bioelectrically sensitive? What other signs of subtle energy sensitivity did I not cover that you would like to share? I look forward to hearing what you say, so please write in the comments below. Relevant research papers and resources are linked in the video description. And there you'll find a link to my comprehensive ebook, Schumann Residences in Human Bioelectricity. And this is either a pre-order or a purchase link depending on when you watch the video. In the next video here, I go more in depth on how you can develop your bioelectrical system naturally. And if you missed the first video where we explore the holographic theory of consciousness, I highly recommend you watch that too. I've been your host, Stefan. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.